O What's up, YouTube? Today I will continue with my series Investing in Greatness. Today the number 25, you can check the other ones on my YouTube channel. There is actually a playlist for all of them. Hope everything is well. Today's player is an amazing one. I'm talking about the legendary player Luis Figo, um, a player that I end up watching quite a lot growing up. So for me, it's a pleasure to make this investing in greatness since I have a lot of memories for Luis Figo. And in the end, I hope you guys also enjoy this one. A lot of requests for Luis Figo. So I assume you guys uh, are quite happy to see that I'm finally doing the investing in greatness for the Portuguese legend. If that's the case, guys, don't forget to leave a like. It's the best way to support my, my work. I know I ask for a like quite a lot, but that's how YouTube works, being real. If you guys leave a like, if you guys leave a comment, uh, subscribe, whatever, that helps the channel uh, tremendous. So if you are doing that, thank you so much. Let's move on into the disclaimer. It will be a short one, but a very important one. No financial advice. I'll always do your own research. Any cards I will show today, I could, I could eventually be buying or selling. That being said, I don't invest a lot in Luis Figo, but could be the case in the future. I'm a collector uh, first uh, and an investor second, so I assess value, then I go for price. I do not believe in timing the market. I believe time in the market as long as you spend that time well. And English is not a main language. Any types of mispronunciations, I'm sorry. So let's start with Luis Figo career, which of course is an amazing one otherwise will not be part of the series investing in greatness and the top of the top of his career was winning Ballon d'Or and of course if you win Ballon d'Or you automatically enter in my perspective you enter into the legend status uh, without any type of doubt and uh, Luis Fig was an amazing player and up winning like I was saying Ballon d'Or one Champions League, four times La Liga, I believe two times with Barcelona, other two times with Real Madrid, four times Serie A with Inter Milan, and in my perspective, quite underrated at that time of Luis Figo in Italy, because Luis Figo still played very well for Inter Milan, even though it was at the end of his career, but still a machine. Um, and six time Portuguese player of the year, and don't think this is a, a easy trophy, because Portugal have had amazing players at the time. I'm talking about Rui Costa, Fernando Couto, Vitor Bahia. So Figo winning six times Portuguese Player of the Year is no joke. And uh, way more trophies, uh, way more awards than that. Those are the, the ones that I think are more relevant. Looking at his Instagram, I have around 3.6 million followers. Of course, it's not a lot if you compare with any new kid on soccer nowadays. Uh, but the reality is Luis Figo ended up uh, um, playing in a time that uh, social media was not even a thing. So by that, of course, that is, uh, <laughs> you guys understand why uh, Luis Figue have out still a big falling. I mean, 3.6 million is a lot of people, but not comparable with other um, players nowadays. That being said, if you engage in the soccer card market, especially in the pre-modern era, I think it's very difficult to not be aware of Luis Figo, um, since he ended up being one of the most important players of that era. That's why I start saying key player of the pre-modern era, top three Portuguese player ever. In my perspective, the best player ever in Portugal was Cristiano Ronaldo, second Eusebio, and third Luis Figo. Figo in his prime was without a doubt a machine. Um, his move to Real Madrid is still one of the most controversial transfers of the history of soccer. Uh, go to YouTube and add, watch what Barcelona fans ended up uh, doing at the time. Crazy stuff. Tremendous player, of course, and one of um, that the market should talk a little bit more because I think Luis Figo, again, great player. Uh, his rookies are actually quite difficult to find, but um, there is not a lot of hype around Figo. I also understand why, like I was saying, but when you look at the, at certain players in the, in the ultra-modern era, again, I don't know, Rashford, for example, uh, and when you look at Luis Figo, it makes me believe, look, <laughs> there is a lot of room to grow in a legend like Luis Figo, a Ballon d'Or winner like Luis Figo. So let's move on and uh, let's start with my favorite memory. And come on, look at that goal. This was a game in the Euro 2000, uh, in the Euro 2000, epic game, a game versus England. England at the time had an amazing team. I'm talking about David Beckham, Scholes, Alan Shear, Michael Lowe and Gary Neville. I mean, one, probably the, the golden generation for England in my perspective. And uh, Portugal ended up uh, starting the game losing 2-0, which was not great, of course. But uh, with this uh, 
super kick, I would say. Luis Figue ended up making the, the first goal for Portugal, 2-1 in this case. And Portugal ended up making a comeback on the Euro 2000, winning 3-2 three, uh, versus England. And this was an impressive game by, by Luis Figo. Portugal, of course, had a very good team at the time. I'm not saying it was just only England, but Figo was a machine on this game, completely obliterated England on this game. Just uh, look, David Beckham was great, yeah, but Figo was on, on the pitch and was the man, uh, at least in this game, of course. I also love David Beckham, by the way. Moving on. Figo rookies and the, the Figo market is actually quite complex and you guys will understand that very very quick why I'm saying that uh, let me say even another thing if you guys want me to, if you guys want to support my work I will actually leave a link for a couple of Luis Figo card, Fig cards on eBay this is a good way to honestly help the channel since I get a small commission if you guys end up buying anything and in the end you don't need to pay me basically it's free for you free not free because you need to buy stuff but i guess you you'll get the product but helps the channel a lot so if you click on the ebay affiliate link again helps me a little bit and i i will leave a couple of luis figo cards at the end let's start with the first one i'm talking about 92 panini football portugal this in terms of cookies i would say is my favorite um, i think it's a beautiful uh, sticker i love the unique design actually in spain they made a similar design around this time but i thought this uh, if you look right now is still a unique design psa total is three and psa 10 zero being the top grade a ps say 8. A BGS 8.5 and I will only use uh, in terms of uh, population I will only use PSA. You should again like I tend to say do your own research take a look at SEC, take a look at, at Beckett. But the BGS 8.5 sold for a little bit over $600. I believe this was one year ago. G give, give it or take it. Um, and uh, I, I believe this was an amazing deal for the person honestly and actually uh, $600 at the time, the market doing so well, seems very low for Luis Fig because the reality is, I believe the market, uh, and most of you guys would agree with me, is facing a downtrend right now. And I suspect if this card ended up entering the market uh, today, will actually sell for more than end up selling one year ago with the market doing well. What that shows, I believe shows education on the market, shows people understanding that Luis Figo is actually a very important player for the history of soccer. He's actually a key player for the history of the pre-modern. So um, this should put in perspective that uh, if you are believing in a player, uh, I'm not talking about Luis Fig right now, that you, you, you think, you know what, the market should appreciate more this player. Look, there is a chance one year from now the market will appreciate that player. If the player you are uh, trying to speculate, trying to invest, is a player with great fundamentals and Luis Figo is exactly that. Again, can I tell you for sure this card will go for more than $600 right now? Of course not, but at least I, I would try to bid maybe even more than that if that card comes to the market. So I suspect more people will go with me or otherwise I will be the winner of this Luis Figo rookie. So this is the, the album for, for the set. Estrelas Campeonato de Futebol 92-93. Uh, in terms of lineage, like I was saying, this, is, this was the most important release in Portugal. Portugal. Um, seems quite rare. PSA total is only three. Um, finding them raw in Portugal from personal experience, not easy at all. Again, pops, they only go up. I'll always keep that in mind. But I suspect this will be a very scarce sticker. That's why I'm saying a BGS 8.5, super strong grade, seems very cheap at $600. So my perspective on this one, my favorite rookie for Luis Figo. Another one that uh, I think is a little bit more easy to find, or, or at least right now the market is showing that, uh, is the 92-93 Panini Football em Ação. Um, I also think this is a beautiful sticker for Luis Figo. Uh, I think the picture is also quite, uh, quite great. Um, PSA total for this one is six. If you guys send to SEC, by the way, you guys are seeing an A on the screen. They give an A a lot of time, but uh, it's not because the card is altered. It's basically it's the, the, there is a miscut on production that all of them end up uh, having this problem. But PSA recognized that and very well on that front. Like I was saying, PSA total is six. Is six. PSA 10, 
zero and the top grade is actually f5 and guess what very recently f5 sold for over 400 dollars which again my perspective don't no financial advice i think wasn't a very good deal for the person i think a five for 400 dollars uh, I think this is a, is a little bit more common than uh, the Panini football uh, sticker, but in the other hand, I still think this is a very difficult sticker to find uh, going forward. So, beautiful sticker for uh, Luis Figo, um, nice alternative, still a rookie, of course. Um, the album was this, Football in Ação, Longa Vida. Funny enough, and uh, this, this is why I'm saying the other had a better lineage. You, you end up acquiring these stickers if you bought uh, yogurts. I'm not sure, I'm not even sure if I'm saying this in the correct way. So again, my English is all over the place. But guess what? That's why technology is great because I can show to you what I, I'm talking about. So basically, and I will read a little bit of Portuguese. Considerar os teus cromos nos yogurts aromas longa vida. This means what? This means that uh, you get the stickers on the yogurts longa vida. Nestlé, I think most of you guys are aware of this brand. Um, and that's the way you end up collecting uh, this uh, set and this is the album so in terms of lineage like i was saying i prefer the other one i think this is a nice product i think the history the history around this sticker is actually fascinating because again guys i know a lot of you guys collect nba american football etc personal opinion that's boring why because in soccer you, you get this type of stuff that is so unique that Again, uh, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm going a little bit far. I'm, I have confirmation bias for soccer, as you guys know. But I think we are so unique in terms of collectibles. Look, <laughs> if you want this sticker, this was the sticker that you end up finding on uh, yogurts. I mean, that, that's, that's great. Come on. So, yeah, uh, great stuff on, on this one. Moving on to the next one. This is 92 Panini Calendários, Luis Figo, Estrelas do Campeonato. This one, I was not able to find uh, um, the album. Maybe there is no album, which is also another possibility. And the PSA total for this one is 3. As you can see, the picture is the same as the, the first one. The top grade is actually a 6, and the PSA is 4, sold for over $500. I like the picture of this one. I think the red actually looks great in a PSA slab. Um, but I have, I would say, some problems, some problems with this one, and I will explain you why. So let's uh, let me show you the back of the card, and as you can see, this is a pocket calendar, and this is quite typical in Portugal. You guys are seeing 93, which most likely represents 92, 92, 93 season. So I don't even like that PSA puts 92. I think it's better than putting 93, but this should be labeled by season old topic for another day but taking taking a look at the uh, at the back we see this this was actually made by panini um was actually made by panini but <laughs> that's why I, this is a complex one for me a lot of collectors uh, and again Luch, the Luis Figo market i would say is not my market not because i don't think Luis Figo is great I, it's just i focus in on other players but i know uh, players that collect Luis Figo that they have problems trying to grade the pocket calendars with psa with svc with bgs this one ended up getting graded maybe because it says panini on the back and maybe because there is information out there that being said, I will show you. Uh, I, I will show you guys a couple of uh, other cards that I also think should be graded by PSA, or at least have a debate around them if they should be graded or not. And that's why I I still believe PSA needs to PSA. I'm talking again. I'm talking PSA because PSA is the king of the grading companies. I mean, I could say BGS and SEC, but let's focus on PSA because the, the other ones will copy eventually. That's the reality. So that's why I'm saying uh, PSA all the time. But I think it's so important to be more tra transparent uh, um, on the soccer card market. Look, what are the rules? Do you need a checklist? Do do you need to be a card? Do you need to be a card slash a sticker? Can you grade a pog? Can you can you grade a pocket calendar? I think it's important to to have uh, more clear rules, clear rule, clear rules. I'm sorry. That way we will be aware of uh, what we can grade or what we can buy on the market, basically. So again, link on the description for those cards, or at least I will try to find them on eBay for you. So before I go into more hooky stuff for Luis Figo, and guys, that will be complex. So. <laughs> 
take a deep breath let me say one thing uh, the q a number 52 already is live on patreon um my patreon community is, is key part of this channel they support me and i tend to put a lot of work there i put a new video every wednesday and the extra audio on saturday in the last couple of months and i'm answering more than 300 questions so if you want to talk about the market if you want to um, basically to ask me a question joining my patreon is the best way to um, to, to do it and again I, I tend to put a lot of content there so if you like my content on YouTube very likely scenario you like my content on Patreon so check the link below the video I think you guys will enjoy my Patreon quite a lot it's ten dollars but I try to, to provide a lot of values there one thing that is totally free is actually my Discord we are more than 500 members I think it's an amazing place to interact with other collectors, to share and to learn. And um, if you are not part of my Discord, what are you doing? I think you guys should join my Discord. Like I was saying, uh, and jokes aside, it's an amazing place to interact with other collectors, to learn about the soccer card market, and we are growing quite fast. So let's move on. All right, so actually let's move on and let's go back because what you guys are seeing on the screen, 92 are the rookie cards, are the rookie stickers for Luis Figo. But now I, I present you what 91 releases not being graded. What I mean with this? Well, PSA, SEC, Beckett, they are not grading those cards as far I'm aware. Keep in mind that if you watch this video one month from now, one year from now, maybe things are different. But at the time I'm recording the video, at least I don't have any information that PSA is grading those and I actually end up talking with other collectors that told me those cars um, are actually getting rejected. Not all of them, but uh, one in particular, I will talk more. So um, this is a, a rookie <laughs> pocket calendar again, but it's similar to, to a card. Uh, for FIG with Portugal, um, says Portugal 91 uh, Campeonato Mundial de Junior, so it should be 91-92, as you guys can see, the calendar is actually for 92. This is another popular one in Portugal, a Grande Gol. This album it was actually a very popular album at the time in Portugal, so PSA not grading this one, I think is honestly very up to debate. I understand it's a pocket calendar, I understand it's not Panini, but guess what? PSA has been grading, I would say, things that are more shady than this one, being real with you guys. I think this one should at least have a consideration to be graded by, PS by PSA. And if that's the case, this will be, I would say, the true rookie. The more, again, the true rookie is always such a weird concept, right? But will be the, the early uh, thing for Luis Figo. Funny enough, the, the, funny enough, I'm sorry, there is other collection that also uses the same picture with some difference. So on this one, you guys are seeing the Sporting uh, uh, Club de Portugal logo. Uh, and on this one, you guys are seeing Os Campeões, because Portugal ended up uh, uh, winning uh, in, the, in the youth uh, um, team uh, a big tournament, Portugal in this case, uh, I, I guess I said that at the beginning, and they made this set uh, for that. Os Campeões means the champions, um this was by um i believe the name is iber ponte something like that but again you can find the, the album online um and i also think that there is a debate if this should be graded or not so as you guys can see things are quite complex for the the rookie for the i would say rookie material for luis figo those are again if there is arguments to be made that those should not be great but by the way I also believe there is an argument for this one to not be graded. So things need to be a little bit more transparent. Um, I think at least the Grand Goal 91, 92, if they are grading the Panini one, they also should, should grade this one. Um, so yeah, complex topic, of course. This one, I don't even think, I never saw the card apart from seeing on the album, but I don't even think this is a calendar. I actually believe this one is a sticker. So if that's a sticker, of course, should be graded in my perspective because you are talking about uh, a real uh, um, a real uh, sticker, a real card. So very interesting. Do not get surprised if sooner or later we eventually end up getting a 91 card, uh, rookie card, rookie sticker for Luis Figo. Um, so yeah. Now, there is even more releases for Luis Figo. That's the crazy part. And I will say even one thing. I've been doing research for Luis Figo for more than one year at this point because I always wanted to do a video for, 
Luís Figo, and there is another rookie, another picture that for some reason I don't find on my computer that someone sent me, but again, I don't even remember who sent me that. So I know there is even another card on 92, uh, another set in Portugal, but let's go with those two for now. Keep in mind that don't get surprised if there is more rookie material coming from Portugal. Those are also not being graded. Again, very similar logic to the last uh, other two. Basically, they look the same. There is a small difference on the card. These ones are exactly the same. They are actually <laughs> 55 both, but this one says Bola ao Centro, which is this is the, um, the album for Bolas ao Centro, and the other one is 92, 93, a Bola. So I think those are also interesting. I think those should also be graded by PSA, by, by Beckett, etc. Um, are those super rare? Again, my idea for, for the Luis Figo market is everything seems quite difficult to find, being honest. Even if they start grading those uh, pocket calendars, I could be wrong, but I don't expect the pop to explode uh, uh, by any means. I think those pocket calendars are also quite difficult to find in Portugal. Um, so yeah, I think it's interesting because look, if PSA only had the, the Panini Football Portugal grader and the Panini Football Ação, I would say, okay, I understand the logic, they care about cards and stickers, uh, and some smart end will say, yeah, but in, in Argentina they also grade pogs, but at the time that was the way uh, Argentina really ended up being made, and that would make sense in my mind. Okay, they are only grading stickers or real cards, they are not grading pocket calendars, but again, this one goes against the, the logic because this is also a pocket calendar and PSA end up grading this one. I'll, I'll also SCC end up grading that one. So um, those are very up to debate. The other ones I also believe should be graded by PSA. Um, the, the ones to keep in mind, and again, I'm repeating myself, but this is a complex topic. So I hope you guys stay with me on this. The, the ones that are a little bit more important, I would say, are the 90 ones, because that will change the, the true rookie on the market, if that makes sense. Because uh, the, real, the reality is, I still love the 92. If the 91 end up getting graded, those will be the, the earliest thing. And for some people, like I was saying, the true rookie for uh, Luis Fig. So interesting stuff. I think uh, there is a lot of work to do on the Luis Fig market. I hope PSA put some time into this. Actually, I guess my video can, can help them because I know uh, uh, members from PSA tend to watch my videos. I hope this can actually help the, um, the Luis Figo market to, to, to get more knowledge into, into graders, into people that, that label cards. So, other cards. And now I'm not talking about rookies. I'm talking about second-year cards, third-year cards, first card with Portugal, first card with Barcelona, first card with Real Madrid. And there is a lot of alternatives. I would say one thing. I think Luis Figo is the type of player that, unless you collect Luis Figo, I mean, if you collect Luis Figo, you should buy basically all of them because the collector wants to have everything. But if your idea is, okay, I want to collect Luis Figo, but I also want to value invest in Luis Figo. I think focus on uh, rookie material. And rookie material is 91, 92. I would focus more on 92 since who knows if the 91 one days will be great or not. But what I'm trying to say with this is, um, if you are just investing, uh, again, you are not, uh, I need to, to say this in a better way, this is when my English <laughs> gives me a couple of problems. If you, if you just went, uh, no one just wants to invest, I, I believe, uh, especially if you are in pre-modern, you are also collecting, slashing, speculating, or slashing, investing. So, but if that's the case, I think that going for the rookie material is what makes sense right now. Why? Because again, they are quite difficult to find, they are quite scarce in the market, but if you are patient, you may get one rookie for Luis Figo, and I think that's the safest place to put your money if you look in a macro perspective for the entire Figo market. Keep one thing in mind, nothing is safe in cards, cards are a super speculative asset and you only should put money that you are okay losing. But again, for example, a rookie for Luis Figo raw, I would say it could be around $200, maybe even more at this point. $200 can be a lot of money for you. But guess what? You can still collect and have fun in the Luis Figo market. For example, this card, a lot of people, they, 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 when they list a card on eBay, they put rookie because it's a 93 upper deck card. 
Well, again, I don't think he's a rookie, to, to be honest, but I think he's, he's a very early card for, for Luis Fig. The, the picture is great. Um, I would say it's quite common. I mean, you, you can find it raw, maybe $20, maybe $50, maybe less, may, maybe more. I'm not sure, but I assume they are quite more cheap than, than the, the true rookies, the, the original cards from Portugal, and that makes sense. Maybe try to find a second-year card or a third-year card for Luis Figo. If the market keeps growing, maybe those will still be rookie material. And let, guess what? Even cheaper alternatives. Mundi Chrome 95 for Luis Figo. First season at Barcelona. Beautiful, beautiful picture at, um, at Camp Nou was the presentation for Luis Figo. I think that's a nice card to, to have in your collection if you are a Figo, if you want to enter the, the, the Figo market. Again, are those better buys than the rookies? That's I'm not so sure, but at least I'm being open with you guys. So, um, first season with Real Madrid, first World Cup with Portugal, um, first, uh, let's, uh, let's say the first ultra modern card for Luis Figo, uh, autograph card. There is a lot of options if you want to collect Luis Figo. Those are some, but there is much, much more, especially Figo and playing a lot of time. Um, in Spain, and in Spain you have Ediciones Est, uh, stickers, Mundi Chromo cards, uh, inserts for Mega Cracks, you have a lot of beautiful, beautiful products, so take a look at that if you want to, to have a nice collection for Luis Figo, and in my perspective, still quite cheap, but again, rookies, at least for now, they are the only thing expensive for Luis Figo, but I still believe they are a great opportunities, no financial advice. So, Figo market to finish my thoughts. Look, I thought it was quite funny because recently, recently, last month, uh, a Luis Figo 91 Grand Goal uh, calendar card, whatever people want to call it again, ended up selling for uh, over $300. So, this shows me that someone probably believes they can get this great in the future, or maybe again, they, they could be just a Luis Figo collector, and the reality is that's the true rookie for Luis Figo. The other sale, um, I, and I already talked about that, was the Luis Figo, Luis Figo Longa Vida Football Rookie Card from Panini. Um, again, I think that's a, a strong sale, being, being, being real, but I think there is a lot of room to grow, even on the... On the Panini Longa Vida Football Rookie Card. And on the, below, you guys are seeing other sales on PLCC. Look, this is a BGS 9.5, um, a little bit over $100. I think it's a nice deal, honestly. I think it's a beautiful card. BGS 9.5, probably condition rate, could be a thing. Um, look at this, SEC 8 for the, the first card at Barcelona, 50, 50 bucks. Again. I think is 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 a nice card to to own if you are a fig collector. Uh, third year card uh, for Luis Figo. Also, I, I think the the edge shot looks great. And of course, the um, I would say the most famous rookie for Luis Figo, uh, six hundred dollars, a little bit over. Um, but this one I thought was a, an amazing deal. The last one was the Panini calendars. Uh, the picture is not great for some reason, um, but you guys can see the price over five hundred dollars. Um, Again, I think was also I think was also a good deal uh, if 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 the person is okay holding that because this card this calendar whatever is still quite difficult to find. So the figure market, in my perspective, and you guys already have the feeling is I think there is a lot of room to grow. Honest, I think Figo is the, a key player. Uh, when you look at, my, at other players like Zinedine Zidane, Thierry Henry, Ronaldo, and I'm not even comparing Figo with them, but Figo Figo. Is part of is part of that generation was also one of the greats of that generation. So I think Figo have a lot of room to grow in my perspective. To finish this, uh, collect things you love, price out you pay, <laughs> values out you get. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Check the links below the video, eBay affiliate link, uh, Discord, uh, um, Patreon. Any support helps a lot, and uh, you guys are great on that. So have a nice day. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Leave a like.